Joy is standing at a corner of the rectangular field shown. He walks uh, the perimeter of the field five times. How many meters does Joey walk? The perimeter looks to me like it is 50 plus 100 plus another 50 plus another 100. And that totals 300. Now, he's walking around five times. So the total amount that he walks is five times the perimeter, so five times 300, and that is 1,500 meters. If A plus B is 9 minus C and A plus B is 5 plus C, what is the value of C? Well, A plus B equals this, A plus B equals that, so those two things must be equal to each other. So set them equal to each other like that, and then just do this algebra. So this looks to me like... Uh, 4 is 2c, and therefore c would be equal to 2. Ophelia is paid $51 for the first week of her part-time summer job. For each week after the first, she is paid $100. How many weeks in total does she have to work for her average weekly pay to be $93? Okay, let's set up the algebra. So it's $51 for the first week, and let's say there's n weeks, right? Let's, we don't know how many weeks there are, so I'm going to say there's n weeks. So the first week's done, but then we have n minus 1 weeks remaining, and those weeks are paid $100 each. And we want the average to be 93, so how do you get the average? You divide by the total, which in this case is n. So this is the algebra, basically. Do this, uh, expand this out, 51 plus 100n minus 100 is 93n, so 7n would be... Uh, 49, I believe, and therefore n is 7. So how many weeks? Seven weeks she would have to work in total for her average weekly pay to be $93. A die is a cube with its faces numbered 1 through 6. One red die and one blue die are rolled. The sum of the numbers on the top face of each die is determined. What is the probability that this sum is a perfect square? So we have one die, second die. There's six possible choices for the first die. One, two, three, four, five, six. And similarly, six possible choices for the second die. And then so the total would be 36. So it's 36 possible outcomes. One, one, uh, one, two, all the way to the last one would be six, six. Right? You can write them all out if it helps you, but I don't think it's necessary. So like any probability question, we have the numerator and the denominator. The denominator is the total which we calculated was 36. Now the numerator is our specific condition. And our specific condition in this question is that we want, if you roll a die, we want this number and this number to add up to be a perfect square. Okay. So what are the perfect squares? Perfect squares are 1, 4, 9, 16, and so on, right? Well, first of all, what's the maximum sum we can get? We can get 6 and 6. That sum is 12. So the maximum sum you can get is 12. So we're not going to be able to get anything past 9 as a sum. Can we get 1 as a sum? And the answer is no, because you would need a 1 and a 0. You would need something like this, 1 and 0. And there's no 0 on a dice. So this one's out. So the 4 and the 9 are the only possible ways uh, to do this. So to get a 4, I think 2 and 2, that would work. 1 and 3 or 3 and 1. And then to get a 9, uh, let's see here, 3 and mm, some, right? 3 and 6, 4 and 5, 5 and 4, and 6 and 3. So that is a total of 7, right? So 7 goes there. And that's the answer to the question, 7 over 36. In the diagram, point P is inside quadrilateral ABCD, also DA equals DP equals DC, and AP is equal to AB. In if angle ADP is equal to angle CDP, which is 2x, and angle BAP is x plus 5, and angle BPC is 10x minus 5, what is the value of x? Okay, so let's label this. Uh, let's see here. Now, since this is equilateral, uh, this angle will be the same as this angle. And again, uh, this is also equilateral up here. So this angle will be the same as that angle. And another equilateral triangle, so alpha and alpha there. And then let's see here. 
this guy is 2x this is 2x and this one in here this angle in there is 10x minus 5 and I think that's sh that should be sufficient let's just see what happens well the first thing I'm going to look at is this whole this whole thing right here that entire circle if you go all the way around it's sh all the angles should add up to 360 and what are those angles we got theta we have alpha and we have gamma and then we have this 10x minus 5 so uh, if I just isolate for the theta the alpha and the gamma that's going to be uh, 365 minus 10x okay hopefully that will help us because now what we're going to do is we're going to concentrate on three triangles this triangle right here this triangle right here and this one right here and those three the total uh, angles should add up to three times 180 since the angles of one triangle add up to 180 there's three triangles so what are the angles we got 2x plus 2 theta we have 2x plus 2 gamma, and we have, uh, let's see here. Oh, I forgot to label one. Uh, there's a BAP, x plus 5. Ah, this one, this little angle in here, that angle in there is x plus 5. Okay. All right, that's helpful. Okay, so that triangle would be x plus 5 plus 2 alpha. Okay, so now let's isolate these guys. Uh, that's going to be 2 times alpha, sorry, theta plus gamma plus alpha. And then what do we have here? 2x, 2x, x, that's 5x. And then this 5. And this is going to be 540. Okay, so hopefully I've done that correctly. And if I have, I can substitute this for this. So 540 is equal to 2 times 365 minus 10x. And now we have everything in terms of x, and that will allow you to solve for x. So let's expand this. We got 540 is equal to 7 to uh, 720. Sorry, 730 minus 20x plus 5x plus 5. So, hmm, looks like 15x on this side. And then this, doing all this math, uh, 190, 195, 195. And then dividing through by 15, that would give me 13. So there you go. x is equal to 13. The product of all of the positive integer divisors of 6 to the power of 16 equals 6 to the power of k for some integer k. Determine the value of k. Well, 6 to the power of 16. I'm going to break up that 6 into 2 times 3. And then break it up even more into 2 to the power of 16, 3 to the power of 16. Yeah. Now, uh... The, the divisors, any divisor of this guy, so divisors are of the form 2 to the power of something, uh, A, and then 3 to the power of something, B, right? So we have to, unfortunately, it's a little bit more time-consuming than I had originally thought. I thought it was going to be fairly straightforward, but because 6 is not a prime number, we have to break it up into two numbers, but that's okay. Hopefully, there should be a little bit of a pattern because otherwise it would be very time consuming. But I think I can get a pattern in shortened amount of time. So, divisors that are of the form 2 to the power of 0, 3 to the power of uh, n, those would be, uh, let me think about this. All the 2 to the powers are 1, so this should just be 3 to the power of 1. And then, oh, they're talking about a product, so I've got to multiply them 3 to the power of 2, 3 to the power of 3, dot, dot, dot all the way to 3 to the power of 16. And this is going to be 
you add the exponents. So I'm using that formula, it would be 16 times 17 over 2. So that's going to be 3 to the power of 136. So what we're really doing is listing all the divisors. And then eventually we're going to multiply them all together. So I've done, done it for this form. We've got to keep doing this. So then the next form is something like 2 to the power of 1 and then 3 to the power of n. Right? So those are of the form 2 times 3 to the power of 1, 2 times 3 to the power of 2, 2 times 3 to the power of 3, and so on, all the way till you get to 2 to the power of 1, 3 to the power of 16. When you, do, when you multiply all these together, you get 2 to the power of 16, right? Because there's 16 of those guys. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Are there 16 of them? Wait, I think I missed one. Uh, no, there, there's... Hmm, hold on. Yeah, I think I missed one here. It should be 2 to the power of 1, 3 to the power of 0. I forgot about that. Here I didn't put it in because it doesn't really affect the um, outcome, actually, because 3 to the power of 0 is just 1. But this one, it does affect the outcome if I, if I don't put it in. So... It's not. It's actually not two to the power of sixteen. It'd actually be two to the power of seventeen. Interestingly, yeah, because you're gonna have zero to sixteen, which is seventeen inclusive. Zero to sixteen inclusive is seventeen. Okay, that's very interesting. Good thing I caught that. And the three, I think, would be the same. It'll be still be one thirty-six. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's move along. The next form is two to the power of two. 3 to the power of n, and you guys get the point. 2 to the power of 2, 3 to the power of 0, dot, 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 all the way to the 2 to the power of 2, 3 to the power of 16, and that's going to be 2 to the power of 34 this time, and then 3 to the power of 136. So, and then you kind of just keep going like that. So if you kind of keep going like that, and then you have to multiply all these guys together eventually, what you're going to get is you're going to get this 3 to the power of 136, this guy, then multiply it by 2 to the power of 17, 3 to the power of 136. Then multiply it by that, which is 2 to the power of 34, times 3 to the power of 136. And then the next one will be um, another multiple of 17, so 2 to the power of 51, times 3 to the power of 136. And then you just kind of keep going until you get to... 2 to the power of, uh, s which multiple of, s of 17 would it be? I think it would be the 16th multiple. So it would be 17 times 16. And then, the, again, 3 to the power of 136. So there you go. That would be all the divisors multiplied together. So now, the threes, these guys, if you just group those together, it looks to me like 3 to the power of 136 times 16. Because there are going to be 16 of those, right? 16 or 17? 17. 17. Sorry about that. Yeah, there's going to be 17. Yeah. And then if you group the 2s, that's going to be 2 times 17 plus 34 plus 51 all the way till 17 times 16. Like that. So 3 to the power 136 times 17, I believe, is 2, 3, 2, 3, 1, 2. And then this one, a little, I'll, I'll show you how to do it. So factor out the 17, you'll get 1 plus 2 plus 3, dot, 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 all the way till 16, like that. And then this guy, we've this one we have completed, and this one will be 17. And then in the brackets, you use that formula, 16 times 17, all divided by 2. And we're getting there. We're getting there almost. And then this one looks like... Uh, let's see here. Uh, 17. Let's do this math. Oh, the same thing. 2312. <clears throat> okay, great. That's actually perfect. Because now we can combine that 3 and the 2. 2312. And then finally it becomes 6 to 2312. So a lot more hard work than I had originally thought. That 6 to the K is this guy. And therefore K is equal to. Two, three, one, two.